today I am going to be showing you how to create this scene. This specific scene is from my Instagram Reel video that I uploaded on my account. The link is in the description below. Also, a lot of the assets that I have used in this video are in a Google Drive that I have linked in the description below. Alright, let's get straight into it. First, create a new solid and call it BG for background and add a gradient ramp effect to it. Make sure the ramp shape is radial and move the top controller to the center of the screen. Then move the bottom controller down until it looks something like this. Change the start color to a dark blue color and the end color to black. And now add the Venetian's blind effect to the layer. And change the transition completion to 35% and the direction to about 30 degrees. Now create another black solid and place it under the background layer. We are doing this because the black lines in the Venetian's blinds effect is actually a transparent layer. So adding the black solid under it makes sure that there is no transparency. Now pre-compose both layers and call it background. Okay, so now import the 3D assets in the link below and add them to your composition. And a pop-up will basically appear which will let you know that the composition settings have changed from classic 3D to advanced 3D. We're going to start with the first 3D layer which is the office desk. Just adjust the rotation and angle of the desk so it faces the camera. Then add a 3D camera with a focal length of 50 millimeters. Add a position keyframe in at around 14 frames and add another keyframe at the start by changing the Z axis to about minus 4000. Now add your garbage bin to the scene and mess around with the orientation similar to the way I'm doing it here. I also decided to change the background color to a more lighter blue and I also moved the bottom controller a bit to add a more vignette effect to the scene. That's basically the black borders around. Now I am just adjusting the camera's keyframes and the garbage bin so the scene flows a little bit more smoothly. Then we can add the chair 3D asset to the scene. Again just more adjusting and I am just making sure everything flows smoothly and is in the proper position and orientation. Once everything looks good, we can start adjusting the speed graphs. Make it look like this, so there is a quick zoom in at the start to hook in the viewers. Next, add a text layer and write the word mediocrity. And make sure the font is bold titling, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, and it is on bold. Now, place the layer under the camera and turn it into a 3D object. Also, I decided to change the label color for the text layer to blue. Now, cut the layer 3 frames after the start of the scene. Then, move 2 frames forward and cut the clip one more time. Now, we move another frame in front and cut the clip and repeat again. So you'll have 2 clips that are at 1 frame each. Finally, move 2 frames forwards and cut the clip for the last time. Now, we can start moving the position of each of the text layers to a different position to create that flicker effect, just like this. I didn't really like the position of the bin, so I decided to move it again over here so it looks a bit better. So now add a null layer to the scene. Also make sure the null layer is 3D. I'm going to call it null1. Then hold the quick whip tool under parent and link and drag it over to the null layer. If you don't see this quick whip, make sure you have these two icons selected at the bottom left of your timeline. Now add a keyframe at this point, then move to the right and a bit in front and add another keyframe. This is so we can create the transition to the next scene. So just keep on moving the keyframes around and adjust the position of the null layer and the camera's keyframes so it looks a bit better. Okay, so once we are done adjusting, open the speed graph editor for the null layer and press F9 to easy ease the graph. Now, adjust the graph so it looks like this. You're going to have to adjust the keyframes again until the transition is smooth and seamless. Just trust your instinct and keep adjusting until it looks good. Now, add two more text layers and type in the word is and a trap. Move it under the other text layers and change the label colors for these ones to brown. Also, make sure you change these layers into 3D assets as well. If they disappear from your screen, just press Ctrl Alt Home and Ctrl Home on your keyboard to center it in your screen. And you might need to adjust the text layers again. Now. Change the font of the first text layer to build titling and making sure it's on light and keep the second one on bold. I also split the other layers and deleted them since we won't be needing them anymore from this point on. So now we are going to start creating the playing cards. 
First, start by creating a new composition. Select the rounded rectangle tool and create a rectangular card shape in your scene. Again, center it using Ctrl Alt Home and Ctrl Home. Also, make sure that the width and height in the composition settings is 2000 by 2000 pixels. I decided to add a bit more roundness to make the card look a bit nicer. Now, start adding the first text layer and make sure you're using the card characters font. I also added it in the link below so you can just import it and start using it straight away. Type in the letter A and move it to the top left corner of the card. I decided to change the A to a K to create the King of Hearts card first. Start adjusting the placement of the letter and then duplicate the text layer to add the heart icon. To do this, you can go to the font's name in Google and you can start checking all the special characters and the keyboard buttons for each of them. For the heart, it is an open curly bracket. Just keep modifying the letters and change the colors to red. Now, to create the K and heart icon on the bottom right corner, we can create a null layer and then duplicate the K and the heart icon. Then, parent both duplicated text layers to the null layer. As you can see, this makes it easier to rotate the letters and place them upside down on the bottom right corner. Just type in 180 degrees under rotation and it will look like this. Now, just hide the null layer since we don't need it anymore. Finally, to finish the card, add a rectangular line on the card, make sure the fill is turned off and the stroke is turned on. Also, change the stroke color to black so it is visible on the card, and start centering it in the middle of the card and adjusting the scale so it fits perfectly in the middle. Once that's done, we can now add the composition layer we just created to our main timeline. In your project panel, duplicate the composition and change the name to card back, then add it to your timeline. Now, click on the card back composition and delete the square line. We will change the K to an A and the heart to a clover using the close square bracket key on your keyboard. Of course, change the colors of all the text layers to black as well. Okay, so now back in our timeline, Make sure the card compositions are both 3D. Press Ctrl Alt Home and Ctrl Home to align it in the center of the screen and start adjusting the scale of both cards to about 45%. Change the color of these text layers to black and move the position of the cards to the back so the text layers show in front of them. Adjust the text layers and the card layers so that the text layers fit inside the black square outline. We are now going to duplicate the camera and null layer and place it above the 3D assets. Then, highlight the camera, null, and 3D assets layers, and pre-compose it all. We're doing this so we can finally change the 3D renderer in the composition settings back to classic 3D. This will also allow us to add effects to our layers. Now, go to all of these text layers and change the mode to difference. This will add this cool effect as you can see here, and will make the flicker effect really stand out. Okay, so now to create that sick card effect. Add the CC Twister effect to the card front composition layer and change the backside to the card back layer. Then, press on the stopwatch next to completion to add a keyframe here at 0%. Go a few frames in front and add another keyframe by changing the completion to 100%. It should now look like this, but we want to smoothen it out a bit. So, start modifying the keyframes and moving them slightly apart. Highlight both keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. The speed editor graph will look like this. Next, we will need to remove these two text layers in our scene, so we will add a keyframe to opacity for both of these text layers at this point. And then we will move a few frames in front and change the opacity to 0%. We will then add a few other text layers and write in the words that lures you, as you can see on the screen. Start by moving these text layers above the card front and card back compositions and center these text layers in the middle of the screen. Start changing the position and change the font of the words lure to go bold extra as you can see. Keep modifying the position of the text and start adjusting the opacity similar to before by adding a keyframe to all of the layers at 0% then moving a few frames in front and changing the opacity to 100%. Now to add some movement, add a null layer and call it null2. Turn it into a 3D layer and parent null1 to null2 using the quick whip tool. Next, add a position keyframe at this point and add another keyframe here and change the Z position to minus 800. Then go to the graph editor and easy ease the keyframes. Then just keep on adjusting the keyframes until the graph looks something similar to this. I changed the last keyframe and moved it a bit in front so the animation looks way smoother. I also decided to change the last keyframe of the null layer to minus 1200. 
Create another null layer and call it null3. Turn it into a 3 layer and link null2 to it. Add a keyframe for the X rotation here and add another one here but change it to 90 degrees. Then click on the graph editor and change the graph so it looks something like this. Now duplicate one of these text layers, center it in the middle of the screen and make its X rotation to 90 degrees. Change its color to white as well and write the words with comfort as you can see here. Create one more null layer and call it null4. Also make it 3D and link it to the previous null as we did before. And add a position keyframe here and another one here. And change the Y position to about 1200. The scene should now look something like this. Next, go to the text layer we created and add an opacity animation. Then, go to add and click on property to add a wiggly effect. Open it up and change the wiggles per second to 13 and lower the opacity to 0%. Add a keyframe for opacity here and go a few frames forward and add another keyframe here at 100%. Move the last keyframe and the front keyframe a bit to the right and the animation should now look like this. Okay, so now we will start adding some final touches to our scene. First, go to the 3D assets layer with the chair and bin and add the drop shadow effect to it. Change the distance to 20 and the softness to about 55. Then, we will add a mask around the bin using the pen tool just like this. Just draw around the bin and add the Gaussian blur effect to that layer. Go down and open the effects section and then the compositing options and click on the plus sign to add a mask reference. Make sure the mask reference is set to mask 1 which is the mask we just created around our bin. Add a keyframe at zero blurriness at this point and then go a few keyframes in front and add another keyframe here at 25 blurriness. I will also move this keyframe back a bit. We're going to repeat this process but for the chair so add a mask around the chair and add another Gaussian blur effect to that layer. Open the Gaussian blur section under effects and press on the plus sign and change the mask reference to mask 2. Add two keyframes for blurriness at the same points as the bin with the same amount of blurriness. The scene should now look like this. I decided to change the blur amount to 20 instead of 25 to add a bit more depth to the scene. Next, go to the card front scene and add a drop shadow to it. Change the distance to 30 and softness to 65. Also, we will add the CC light sweep effect to it and we will move the controller to the top left of the card. Change the width to 190, the sweep intensity to 27, the edge intensity to 55, and the edge thickness to 6. Since the card is too bright, we can't see the light sweep effect, so to fix this, add the loom streak effect to it and move it above the CC light sweep effect. Then, change the exposure amount to minus 0.4, and the card should now look much better as you can see. For the card to appear, we will use the grid wipe effect. Move the controller to the bottom right of the card and add a keyframe to completion starting from 100% at this point. Then move here and add another keyframe at 0% completion. Separate both keyframes a tiny bit so the animation is smoother. Next, we will change the opacity for this text layer. Just add an opacity keyframe here at 100%, move it a bit more in front and then add another keyframe behind it but at 0% opacity. We will start adding the first adjustment layer to the scene and call it screen shake. Add the transform effect to it and the slider control effect as well. Hold alt and press on the position stopwatch and type in wiggle 15. And then use this pick whip and drag it to the slider control. The expression should now look like this. Start adding a keyframe using the slider control at this point and add another keyframe after it but change the slider control to 70. Now move a few frames in front and add another keyframe at 0. Go into the graph editor and make the graph look like this. We will need to move the last keyframe in front a bit to create a decay for this screen shake effect. Copy these keyframes and paste them at the start of the scene to add a screen shake effect there as well. I also adjusted the last keyframe as you can see. Finally, add one more adjustment layer and make it 3 frames long. Add the black and white effect to it and the CC scatterize effect, but change the scatter to 0.5. Move the adjustment layer to the part above the screen shake keyframes. Your scene should now look like this. If you guys want more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below what kind of tutorials you guys want to see. Also, click on the video on the screen right now if you want to learn how to create animations like a pro.